And then Pinor asked a good question. I guess this is kind of related to the rings discussion and like why players want out. I feel like it's a lot different in the NFL. That's just my take. I feel like players, at least for NFL wise, like they usually want out because they want to get paid more. They, they, you don't see as many ring chasers in the NFL, like a quality role player, like, I, I don't know. It's tough to say an example, but say there was a receiver that was solid who just took the bare minimum to go play for um, like the Patriots in the mid two thousands, or um, I don't know, just like any dynasty you could think of. It doesn't happen. I feel because it's harder to get money in the NFL, and you know the contracts aren't guaranteed, so they really are struggling. At least in the NFL, it's you don't make as much money if you're a quality player in the NFL as you do in the NBA. And that's why I think it doesn't happen as much. I agree. And I think even when it does happen, the problem is that that one player doesn't change anything. The NFL has way too much between injuries, between coaching, between schematical stuff, between the fact that you need like 35 good players, not 22 in an NFL season. And there's so much about depth. I just feel like even if you really stack the team, Like tomorrow, if you gave the Chiefs another really great offensive player, let's just say for the sake of argument, DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Chiefs. And now they have Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, and Travis Kelsey, right? Ridiculous. Maybe the greatest trio of receiving options we've ever seen to go with one of the most talented quarterbacks we've ever seen. There's still a good chance they don't win the Super Bowl. It's probably if you laid down the logical odds, it's more likely that they don't win the Super Bowl than they do. So like because of that, I think that – it like stars can't just sign somewhere because the Super Bowl is so not guaranteed in the NFL. You know, like the who would have thought the 18 and 0 Patriots would have lost to that Giants team, but they did. But in the NBA, it's like for the most part, you know, if LeBron D Wade and Chris Bosh team up, yeah, they lost to the Mavericks, but we figured they were going to win at least one or two and they did win two. So like, you know, KD, Steph, and Clay. Like, everybody was trying to come up with reasons why the Cavs could beat them. But at the end of the day, we all knew no that that Warriors team was going to win, too, if they were all healthy, and they did exactly that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would just say the two things that stick out to me is kind of the, the blueprint of the NFL, where it is harder for certain players to dominate. Obviously, with the quarterback position, that can happen. Um, but – uh, also, just in the sense that it's a one-game playoff series, where it makes it so a playoff format where any any team can win, and that's how teams like the 18-0 Patriots have lost. And I think the series format where the NBA um, plays into the fact that super teams can dominate more because any team can lose on any given day, but if you play a team like the current Nets at full strength or the the Warriors with KD in a seven-game series, it's going to make it very, very difficult to beat them. So I would say the the blueprint of the depth chart and then also the playoff format sticks out to me. Why this isn't really as much of a problem in the NFL. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, when you think about it, there's a lot less parity in the NBA, in the NHL, in sports where there is multiple games to prove yourself because the better team's coming out um, more times than often. And you know, in the NFL, you'll have those one-off games where a team that's not good in the playoffs somehow beats a, a team that's better. And I think we've seen that time and time and time again. You know, there's a reason it's any given Sunday. And it's a reason that the uh, – who was it? The Jets team who hadn't won a game went to went and played the Rams and beat them. And the Rams were touted as one of the best teams. And it didn't matter how, how much more skilled the Rams were. I mean, their roster is just – was – far superior in every single imaginable way yet the New York Jets won and it's not it's it's not because it's um you know a few games they played I mean, it was one game one sunday and that's why i don't think it happens in the nfl and you know one player doesn't have as much sway as one star does in the nba although quarterbacks do have a lot of power and i guess we've seen that um the last few off seasons with quarterbacks moving and stuff but it, it's not to the extent of the NBA. Right. And we still overdo it with quarterbacks, right? Like we say, why didn't this guy win this Super Bowl? Or why didn't this guy do this thing? Well, yeah, because it takes 30 guys on a football team to win. Like, look at Tom Brady. The Patriots weren't that great of a football team in 2019. Brady didn't magically become a way better quarterback 
in 2020, he just went to a much, much better roster with a much better supporting cast. So, like, we like even the quarterback example, I think that's maybe like the only the NFL media maybe puts too much on the quarterback. Like, yeah. you should have won this, you should have won that. But at the end of the day, you know, like, I think there is an understanding that even the quarterback needs a lot of help. Definitely. But good question, Pinor, as always.